Hi guys, Micro here. This is my Big Game Hunter in-depth guide. In this guide, I talk about Big Game Hunter itself, how to get started, how it works, how to do it efficiently, and literally everything you need to know about Big Game Hunter, and I try and break it down as easy as possible. So let's get right into this video. First things first, what do we need to hunt the dinosaurs and what are the requirements? First of all, there's three new tiers of dinosaurs. The tier one dinosaurs are 75 hunter, 55 slayer, and require one of the three following baits. A raw shark, selfish, or manta ray. There's three dinosaurs per tier. These are the lowest level to do, these are the easiest ones, and they drop the tier one meat that's required to hunt tier two dinosaurs. What do I mean by this? Well, each one of the tier 1 monsters that you hunt drops their meat. You need their meat to hunt tier 2 dinosaurs. So essentially, if you hunt tier 1 dinosaurs, you can either sell the meat that people will buy to hunt tier 2 without having to hunt tier 1, or you can hunt tier 1 to then hunt your own tier 2s with the meat you get from your tier 1. Again, there's three tier 2 dinosaurs ranging from 80 to 90 hunter and 60 to 70 slayer. These drop the meat for the tier 3 dinosaurs. Again, you could sell the tier 2 meat for a very nice amount of money. Or you can use that meat to hunt your own tier 3 dinosaurs. These tier 3 dinosaurs are the highest level. They require 94 to 96 hunter and 74 to 76 slayer. Again, 3 dinosaurs to hunt in this tier. These drop tier 3 meat, which isn't really worth anything at all. It's only really got a use of food right now, but in the future, Jagex was saying that they will find a use for it. Currently, it's just food. But the only ones that drop more pieces are tier 3 dinosaurs. This means even though the meat is not worth much money, you can get the mall pieces to make the new Hex Hunter bow style mall for melee. At this current time, that mall is worth a bill. Each piece of that mall is worth over 300 mil. That is insane. Obviously, it's going to go down in price. But then again, the meats are super expensive right now as well. You could hunt tier 1 dinos and get 6 mil GP an hour right now in the meats and stuff they provide. Tier 2 dinos are like 10 plus mil an hour right now from the tier 2 meat they provide. Tier 3 dinosaurs are expensive to hunt because the tier 2 meat is so expensive. But if you get that piece of the mall, you're laughing and you've made so much money with a big ticket item. I have no idea what the meat's going to settle at if you are watching this quite a long time after the land out of time. The prices may be completely different, but it's always going to be consistent money from tier 1 and tier 2. And tier 3 is always going to be that big ticket item that costs you money to fight them until you get that. I like this concept. It's really cool. And obviously it goes without saying, tier 1 dinosaurs are the worst XP. Tier 2 are the mid-range, and Tier 3 are the best XP. I'll leave a link in the description for the Hex Hunter melee-style weapon of that mall in the description. If you're interested in checking that out, there'll be more info there. When it comes to my setup, it's on screen. Now, you take the bait that you need to lure the dinosaur with, obviously. I don't think Hunter Cape has any use here, so you can wear any cape you want. I have the Hunter outfit for more Hunter XP. I do bring Grace of the Elves, because it can proc when you're woodcutting. So you can get some free Seren Spirits alongside using your Luck of the Dwarves. I have an Enhanced Excalibur as my offhand with Wise and Mobile. That way I get Mobile on my Surge and my Bladed Dive, and I get the Wise perk for more XP. I have an Attuned Crystal Hatchet in my main hand. This can be used with Bladed Dive. So you can just main hand an augmented one. I have honed on it because that's useful. But if you have furnace, do not take furnace in here. It has a chance to consume the logs that you do harvest. And then it's going to make it way harder for you. If I was going to recommend anything before doing this, try and get bladed dive and mobile. These are so, so beneficial here. And it's going to make it so much faster. Another thing I would recommend is either note paper or a pack yak to either note or store the items that you get. Your inventory space gets very, very minimal after a while. Okay, so now that's covered, I'm going to give you an aerial view of the map in Big Game Hunter and just speak about what things are. The giant ring around the dinosaur is obviously the ring that you can't go into. If you're in there for too long, the dinosaur will roar at you and send you away. Just like this. You can stand in the ring and make it go yellow or orange, but as soon as it goes red, the dinosaur's going to roar and chase you away. So if you need to, you can just search and bladed dive right through the circle, and then you're not going to get roared at as long as you're going the opposite way of the dinosaur. 
There is an exception for it not actually detecting you though, and that's when you stand in the tall grass like this. There are very rare maps that don't have any tall grass, but most maps have at least one or two tall grass to stand in. If you stand in this, the dinosaur will just walk past you and it's fine. If you do get trampled by the dinosaur like this, you can freedom the stun and get away. If you're not into grass and the dinosaur stuns you, you're in for a bad time, right? So if you freedom, surge, you're normally okay. The dinosaur can roar and this circle disappears while it's roaring. That means it's going to change direction. So be prepared for whenever that happens that he's going to go the opposite way. That's quite key and you can really utilize that very well. If you're gathering some resources or something and it roars, you know it's not going to come near you and you can gather it for even longer. Now, how do you actually hunt the dinosaur? If you take a look around, you can see different resources you can gather from. There's trees and vines. These trees and vines give you the resources that you need to build the structures to hunt the dinosaur. These structures are free bastolas. Each one of these requires one vine and one log. Then there's the middle pressure plate, which requires one log. You just click on these to build them when you have the resources, and obviously you can't get caught by the dinosaur while doing so. Once you have the bastolas built, you have to load them. You make spears. The way you make spears is you just fletch your log into a spear. So obviously three bastolas, you're going to want three spears. The way that you make these spears deal damage is you get poison from the frogs around and about. There's blue frogs, golden frogs, and red frogs. The dinosaur is going to be weak to one of these colors. You don't know which color it's weak against until you've tested it out the first time. Then it's always going to be weak against that color until it goes into hiding and has a 60 minute cooldown until you can hunt it again. This is usually after five to six tries. Sometimes I can kill the dinosaur five times, then it goes into hiding. Sometimes it's six. So the best way to utilize this, in my opinion, is to do two of one color and one of another to test to see which color is the most effective. One of the colors will be the least effective and deal 7.5k damage. One will be a mid tier and deal 15k damage. And one will be a high tier and deal 30k damage. So you need to find out which one is going to deal 30k damage. So every time you hunt it in the future, you're always going to deal 30k damage. So free spears at 30k, that's the whole 90k of the monster. Every single tier of monster all have 90k HP. So you can one shot any of them once you know its weakness. So how do you find out its weakness with two of one color and one of another? Well, this is how. You'll load up your ballistas and you'll shoot it, right? When you take a look at what damage it takes, take a look at the colors and how much each thing does. If you take a look at this one in particular, two of my turrets hit 15k and one hit 7.5k, which means none of them were the high tier poison. I use two blue and one yellow, so I know red is what I'm going to need to use. After the cutscene, there's two ballistas still up, and it has under 60k HP, so I can just use two reds and it's going to die. Then from then on, I just use three reds and it instantly dies until it goes into hiding. Every time you kill a dino, run over to it, skin it, and that's what's going to give you your big XP drop and your loot. The reason why I use two of one color and one of another is this. It has an average of 4.5 spears used to kill the dinosaurs. It's the best average, I believe. When these spears hit, the two that I chose were 30k. So it hit 60k in just those two and 15k in the second one. So I know this one's weak to blue and I only need to use one ballista and I can use one blue spear and it's dead because it's on 15k HP. Really awesome. Okay, so the poison is a little bit hard to break down, but I'm going to do it as best as I can here and to show why I think this is the best method. We don't know what the poison is, so we need to guess. So we guess with two of one color and one of another. If the two that we guessed hit 30k each and the second one hit 7.5k or 15k, that's a total of four spears and you can kill it with only one spear in the second phase. If the two that we chose were 15k and the one that we chose was 30k, that's also only four spears as that's 60k damage. Then it only needs one 30k in the last and then it's dead. Now the other three options deal 30 to 37 and a half thousand damage, which means you're going to need two spears to deal 60k in the last phase and take a total of five spears. So it means three out of the six times you're going to only need four spears and three out of the six times you're going to need five spears. This makes it an average of only 4.5 spears to find the high tier poison every time. Then remember, you can just use that color until it goes into hiding. And from then on, it's only going to be three spears and one rotation every time. 
Okay, now to speak through one of my kills and just tell you how I do it and why I do it this way. Starting off, you want to get resources, right? You need resources to do this. I go chop some vines. You only need three vines, but they carry on to your next hunts as well. So everything you don't use on your first hunt, you can then use on your second, third, fourth, etc. So what I normally do is I normally gather more than enough vines in this time so then the next ones are easier. I'll typically get like six vines or so, so then I'll have enough vines for the first one and the second one. I'll then go and get loads and loads and loads of wood. Wood is super important because you don't need wood just for structures, you also need it for spears. So I'll harvest loads and loads of wood. Once I've harvested a ton of wood, I'll hide in the long grass. If you hide in the long grass, you can freely make so many different spears, right? And then if you make a ton of spears in the long grass, even if he walks past you, He's not going to catch you. You don't have to move. You won't get interrupted. Then once I've made my spears, I've got my vines and I've got my logs. I can then start getting the poison from the frogs. So like I said before, I'll get two of one poison and one of another. So here I gathered two golden frogs. And now I have two spears which are golden. This then allows me to build my bastilers and put the ammo inside them. Obviously, I've got to do all of this while dodging the dinosaur itself. While hiding from the dinosaur, I also quickly gathered a red frog as well. So now I have two golden, one red. And we'll see which one hits the most. Or if neither of them hits 30k, that means blue is going to be the best. Once I had built and loaded up all my ballistas while dodging the dinosaur, I could then build the pressure plate in the middle. Pressure plate in the middle only requires one wood. So in total, for a whole thing, you need seven woods and three vines. But like I said, getting extra is beneficial. But the seven wood and the three vines would cover the ballistas, the pressure plate, and the spears needed. Now it was time to see whether I picked the right poison or not. So you watch the cutscene, you let it get shot, it gets hit for 15k, 7.5k, 7.5k. Sadly, I chose all the wrong colours, so it's going to be blue. This means I need to use a total of five spears this time round, so I go get the last two blue frogs that I need to make two blue spears. You still have two ballistas standing as well. It only removes one of them, which means you have the perfect amount of ballistas still standing, which means you don't have to remake those. Then I put the two blue spears into the ballistas, make the pressure plate again, shoot it for 60k, and he's dead. Now, every single time I hunt this from now on, I know that it's weak to blue until it goes into hiding. You'll get a 60 minute debuff when it goes into hiding and you won't be able to hunt it anymore. Then when it's back out of hiding, it will change color. She'll get at least five to six attempts of killing this, knowing that it's 100% blue. Attempts sadly do count if you kill it or if it scares you away. It's a bit of a shame, but it just gives you more of a reason not to get caught. There's a rare chance when you do an encounter that it's going to give you two and even three dinosaurs to fight at the same time. This makes it way harder, obviously. To compensate for the difficulty, you do get more rewards and XP if you complete it. The first dinosaur you kill, you get your normal XP and your normal loot. The second one, you get two times the XP and two times the normal loot. The third one, if you manage to kill all three at the same time, you get three times the XP and three times the loot. So for example, if you do an encounter with two dinosaurs, you're pretty much getting the XP and loot for killing three dinosaurs. That makes up for having to do two at once and taking longer. And if you do three dinosaurs, you're essentially getting the XP and the loot from six. Obviously, it takes you way longer to do, but you do get rewarded for that. Remember, you can only do X amount of dinosaurs an hour, so when you get a double or a triple spawn, you're essentially just going to get more loot and more XP before it goes into hiding. Oh, I left too early. What? Wait, was that a bone in my inventory? Let's go, let's go, please. Please. It was... Oh my god. I man that what that's a piece of the mall that's like 300 mil dude oh my god <laughs> oh hell I played it for 300 mil because the mall's what like a bill or something and it instantly sold for 310 mil I might have been able to get more but I'm not risking it with such a brand new item that mall's probably gonna crash in price and stuff but 310 mil oh I am so happy. This is like my favorite content right now. It's so enjoyable to do. And I just made all this money. Holy moly.
Ending this video out, given the XP rates from my testing, a lot of people are saying the XP rates are trash and they're not worth doing, blah, blah, blah. To be honest, I get consistent higher end of these XP rates now that I'm used to doing it and I practice it for two days. The lower end of these XP rates is probably when someone is less experienced with the minigame and they don't know exactly how to do it properly and they're going to get less XP. Yes, this is less XP than Ornate Turtles and stuff, but remember, they're less XP now due to the Hunter nerf as such anyway. But say, you know, maybe they're 200k worse than one ticket in Ornate Turtles, you actually make a lot of money at the same time though. And you could probably get even more than my high end rates because I'm still inexperienced, it's only been two days. Either way, for the XP rates, the tier one dinos are 100 to 150k experience an hour. Remember, they need 75 hunter. The tier two dinos, remember, they're 80 to 90 hunter, and they're 225 to 300k experience an hour. The tier three dinos, the ones that are 94 to 96, they are 350 to 550k experience an hour. The highest experience an hour I've gotten is 550k so far, but then again, I'm sure I could probably get more if I get a good double spawn and I do it efficiently and stuff. But this is a realistic estimate from all of my testing. Remember, you get small amounts of Slayer on top of that as well. So when I was getting my 550k Hunter experience an hour, I was getting about a fifth of that XP in Slayer as well. That's 100k experience an hour in Slayer on top of the Hunter XP. Not bad. You get Hunter's Marks for hunting animals, and you can buy upgrades with this. The only permanent upgrade is Quick Traps. It increases the speed at which you build and arm traps by 30%. This is super helpful when it comes to trying to do it as quick as possible and getting the most XP out of it. Another thing you got to remember is no one really has the time-gated parts of this content done yet. One of those is building the base. This Hunter Lodge has three tiers of really good benefits that will again increase your experience an hour. One being 10% chance of an additional resource from woodcutting, that includes vines and logs. A 2.4 second increase to the time it takes a monster to catch you. This makes it way harder to get caught. 2.4 seconds is huge. And the tier 3 benefit is the best one. One type of frog is removed at the start of each big game encounter. That means with the method that I showed, with the tier 3 perk, you always use 4 spears. It's gonna be epic. Absolutely epic. And that will be it for this video. I tried to make it as detailed as possible, tried to include as much things as I could. Hopefully this was helpful to you, hopefully you learned something new about the new content. Give the video a like if you did enjoy it, it did take a long time to get all of this together, and hopefully it paid off. And until next time, see ya.